Score presents. We your girl Amy giving you the lowdown on the latest urban acts. So this is what I like today on the mixtape when we introduce a new vibe on the UK music scene. Yes, today with me I have Seth. How you doing? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to the mixtape. Thank you for having me. Now, Seth, we remember you from So Solid, mm -hmm. The Realist. Mm -hmm. Tell us how this all came about for you. Um, what, the whole music thing? Basically, yeah. I was 16 years old, I was going to school, um, a massive fan of Jodeci. But saying that, you kind of went into your music a lot younger than that, Yeah, you? no, I mean, if you want to go way back, I mean, like, I was... Let's go way back. You want to go way yeah, back? Yeah, let's go way okay, back. Okay, way back. Um, there was a band called Ultimate Chaos, and they wanted me to be, like, the lead singer of the band. And my dad was like, no, uh, you're too young, you're 14 years of age. By the time I hit 12, I was, like, listening to Brian McKnight religiously. So I used to listen to McKnight every day. I was at school, I'd sing to girls. Girls would always tell me, like, man, your voice is nice. Um, you should um, consider like, know, hey, singing. how you doing? Your yeah, voice is lovely. Like, your voice is real nice. <laughs> I, like how, I like the way you sing. And then one time I must have sang uh, Come and Talk to Me by Jodeci for one girl. And then um, basically the girl then turned around and was like, she had a tear in her eye. And she, she just like, melted there and then she was yeah. like, yeah. And then I thought to myself, you know what, I could actually see myself doing this forever. And then um, when I turned 16, um, I went to a Brian McKnight concert in Los Angeles because my father used to own a hotel out there. So I was out there quite a lot. Okay. And then come 16 in LA, I went to see Brian McKnight. And then after that, it was a wrap. I just knew it wasn't about ladies throwing underwear at him or it wasn't the fact that he sings amazing. It was just the fact that this dude is so creative. He can play every instrument, writes all his songs. And when he gets on stage, he's sharing that with the world. It's like I mean, you could see world, yourself, you could us. like picture yourself yeah, doing that. Yeah, I thought to myself, feel... you know what, I write songs every day. I've been writing songs every day, more or less, since I was 16 years of age. What inspires you to write songs, though? Like, where do you get your inspiration from? Um, girls. A lot of it is from girls, man. Like, my relationships. I mean, I'll be honest, I was like 14, I was writing songs about stuff that I hadn't even experienced, do you know? Mm. And um, people always used to say to me, well, how do you write that? I, I really think it comes from like... Uh, for me, anyway, Indian films in the like, early what, days. The whole Bollywood Yeah, the whole of... Bollywood thing. There was a lot of romance back then, though. Back then, films, yeah, there yeah. was a lot of romance. So I guess it just came, it kind of stemmed from Bollywood movies to Hollywood films to being old enough to be in relationships, mm. to understand them. And yeah, and then that's where all the inspiration came from. So you have been like a ghostwriter for like uh, yeah, a couple I've, I've of written um, pop uh, lots of, and... Yeah, lots of stuff. I've written for Blue, I've written for Gabrielle. I've written for, uh, do you know what, I've written for lots of pop acts, some that came through, some that didn't. I did a lot of stuff uh, for Liz from Atomic Kitten, I've done a lot of stuff. I've just been writing, I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. I, even mm -hmm. when I'm in Germany, I can tell you about acts, I can't even pronounce their names, but I write but for But you've them. wrote their music? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote their songs for them and whatnot. And um, I write songs, like, that's really, if, like, what, if before singing, I'm a songwriter, I'd say. I like, I love writing songs, that's my talent. So let's talk about your track, Out of the Ghetto. Mm, so where did that kind of the inspiration for that come from? Um, basically, because we it's, all know life on road is different to yeah. life at school. You know, we all go through these things. It's it's kind of a true story. I mean, basically, what it was is that I signed my record deal. Um, I got like a real load of money. Talk about so solid. Mm. How did that all come about? Because um, you were in a crew first with uh, Mega Man and uh, yeah, basically, your brother. I didn't go into Ultimate Chaos. Another reason for that was because I was in a group with Mega Man, Swiss, Cash, my brother Shabs. Um, basically, what it was is that Mega Man had to go away to a place where they send a lot of naughty kids. Um, when they do naughty things, they get sent okay. to this place and, and they get held there for many, many months. Mm -hmm. So he was at naughty school and I thought to myself well this ain't really working out like, I don't think homeboy will be coming out anytime soon so I was like well what do I do and then um, I hooked up with um, my boy K1 and I was like K listen um, my group thing I don't really see that happening anytime today and I think you're mad talented like, why don't me and you get together and do something and it was literally that it was like I went to his house I was 16 years old went to K's house met K1 
he played something for me on the piano. I was blown away, and then I was just like, you know what, Kay, I think me and you should do something. And um, whilst me and Kay were doing the realist, mm -hmm. Mega was in naughty school doing the blueprint for Soul Solid. So when he came out, he was expecting me to be their guy. And hey, I've been waiting for you forever. What are you saying? But you weren't. I wasn't. And then he came out and was like, well, I've made Soul Solid crew and like you're the lead singer. And I was like, no, no, I've got the Because we hear, you know, we hear your voice on tracks like Broken Silence, mm. Haters, mm. and So Grimy. Mm. And then um, you did something with The Realist as well, which was Freak, freak mode. mode. And that kind of blew up, didn't it? Yeah, that Freak Mode did really well. I mean, through Freak Mode, I, I like Freak Mode because I gained a lot of US fans by that record. Although I didn't really touch them borders. I mean, like, Neo. I met Neo. Neo was, Neo was bugging out over me like I was Prince. He was just like, man, you sang Freak Mode? That's your record? Mm. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, man, you don't understand the significance of that record. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, he bugged out. I mean, the first time I played Robin Thicke, uh, freak mode. He was like, "Man, can I cover it?" You know, people just love the record. I don't yeah, know what it is it about. It was a big tune, though. So, I mean, like they heard the record, they loved it. Saigon heard the record and was like, willing to work with me. Like anybody that just, it's an undeniable record, basically. Anyone that heard freak mode was like, "Yo, get the kid to holler at me. Whatever it is, let's make it happen." So it was real easy for my publishers to find me the work and the label because everyone wanted to work with the kid. So let's talk about America. America. Because um, you got swooped up by um, Atlantic. Yeah. And then you went over there. Mm. Now, I just want to know how hard is it to go over there mm. and kind of stand your ground as a UK artist and mm. kind of talk about the streets, talk about road, talk about this. You, see, you know what? It's, it's funny because when they, when they look at us and we talk about road, they must think we live in some Peter Pan world. Like, we don't have hoods where we are. But you know what? Everyone has a hood. Every, everywhere has it's a like hood. Everyone's... It's ridiculous. Like, to think that there's no hoods in, in London or England in general, it's just ridiculous. So when I was over there, they had their writers ready for me and the stuff they were writing for me, I was like, listen, I'm a songwriter. Mm. You know, you don't need to be here watching over me and making me sing lyrics. Like, I'm here with my crew. And, you know, I'm down with whatever you want me to do. You know, them <laughs> kind of crap lyrics. So I was just like, you know what, I'm not really in on that. I write ballads, I write songs, real songs. And if I'm going to write songs about growing up in the hood, then I'm going to be real and talk about hmm. what stuff that I've seen. Because what I love about being from where I'm from and elaborating on, on it is like, I feel like a journalist. Like, I have seen some crazy stuff, like real, like a lot of my friends have gone through a lot of crazy stuff. And that's why I like to write about those things because those are actually real life situations that people should touch on and school people and on, on how to avoid that kind of stuff and whatnot. I've got the new Robin Thicke joint. I got, um, but he took quite a shining to you though, didn't he? He's like, he really liked you when you went over there. And who, Robin? Yeah. yeah, I lived with him for three months. I lived with him and his wife, Paula, lovely people. You know, they looked after me, fed me. They didn't have to do that. No. Mm. Um, do you have a message for your fans? Any advice to youngsters out there? I do, I have one message for the fans. It's like, if you ever catch this girl and she becomes your woman, <laughs> I swear to God, I am jealous. <gasps> and I will find you and I'll run you down. But, um, Honestly, see, I'm just like lost for words right now, but musically? Oh, musically, yeah, stay at it. Don't listen to your parents. If they tell you you can't do it, don't listen to them. If you believe you can, keep doing what you do because you do it amazingly. And I know you do because if you believe in yourself, then that's all you ever need. See, that's how we do it right here on the mixtape with Seth. Yeah.